All right, you guys, so hopefully you got down your ideas or you shared it with a friend or family member for what you're thinking about where the rust came from. Was it the pipes that turned into the rust? Was it a mixture of different things? How did this occur? So what we need to understand is, is this even possible in the first place? Can substances turn into different types of substances? And so today we're going to collect some invest in evidence through an investigation. Now, if we were in the classroom, I would talk a little bit about some safety that we always have when we're doing science investigations. Um, we always want to make sure that we're reading the directions and really understanding what our procedure is before we get started. That if you were with me, that you're listening to the instructions, right? We've talked about this before, but you never want to taste any of the chemicals. That is not a property that we ever want to collect by ourselves. Um, and then for smelling, we really don't want to put our noses into the substance, but we can gently waft um, and, and get some, some smell uh, data in that way. Now, in the classroom, I probably would have you wear safety goggles, but I realized that you probably don't have these at home. Now, the things that I've asked you to use are not really going to be very harmful, uh, but make sure you really are careful that you have an area set up, that there aren't gonna be spills, um, and you aren't touching your face and your eyes after you've done this investigation. Um, so just be really safe as you're doing this. Follow the same kind of guidelines that you know that I would have for you in the science classroom. So what is our investigation? Well, we are gonna do some different tests by mixing some different substances together and seeing whether we can cause them to turn into something new. I have something called calcium and chloride and sodium carbonate that I found in my classroom. So we're gonna run a test with that. Um, and if you don't have the, these things at home, which I, I'm guessing you probably don't, then you can go ahead and watch the video and see the results here. You might have some baking soda and vinegar at home. So if that's the case, you can hear a little bit about how I want you to do this and then go ahead and be able to um, do this yourself. And then we also can test uh, baking soda and salt because I assume that you might have these things at home as well. Again, if not, it's absolutely fine. You can follow along with me. All right, you guys. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna start with the test of calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. And I first want to show you um, what these things look like. So before I do, I have some goggles um, and I am going to go ahead and put these on. I have some calcium chloride here. And as you'll see um, in the, the regular form, it is a, a white material that, oops, hold on a second. This is a white uh, powdery type substance. It has some granules um, that are round. It kind of reminds me a little bit of dip and dots. Now, we are going to actually use a solution of calcium chloride. And what I mean by this is we are going to dissolve some of this calcium chloride in water. And this is a really common thing that chemists do um, when they are trying to, to examine um, solid substances. So here is my calcium chloride dissolved in water. You'll see it's a pretty clear um, liquid. And again, there's no solid left in here. Pretty clear, a little more foggy than water, um, but I still can actually see through this. Next, I want to show you um, sodium carbonate. And again, I am gonna put this in solution as well, but I want you to see uh, what this is. It's a white powder again. Um, as you'll see, it's very fine, kind of small grains. Um, and I have prepared my solution of sodium carbonate here. So as you'll see, uh, this again is a liquid, semi-clear, they're both pretty colorless, um, although the sodium carbonate is a little bit more cloudy. So as we mentioned, uh, we are trying to understand whether substances can change into new substances. 
And so it would be really great for you to go ahead and pause the video, take some observations of the substances before we mix them together, because we really want to look at what is occurring um, during and after we mix them. Do they stay the same? Do they combine? Uh, what are we noticing? So go ahead and pause um, and I will go get ready to mix these things together. All right, you guys, so hopefully you have written down some observations about our before. I am going to now mix these two things together in a beaker and we are going to take a look at what happens. So you can go ahead and jot down some observations for the during, um, we'll let it sit for a moment and then after mixing as well. So here we go. What? Okay. So I'm not sure if you can see it very well. I'll move it a little bit closer to the camera. Um, but you might have noticed that as soon as these two different substances mixed, it turned to this milky white kind of substance. Uh, so remember, we started out, it was pretty clear. Um, you could kind of see through them, somewhat cloudy, but now we've got this milky white substance that um, seems to be pretty thick. It's really interesting. Um, I am going to see kind of what it looks like. Interesting. So it also seems uh, like there's some white powder in here as well. Um, so this is really, really cool. When we mixed these two substances together, it now looks like there's some white powder um, kind of dissolved in this liquid. So there we have it, our first test. Make sure you are writing down some observations. All right, so we did our first test, our calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. And we really saw that it does seem like we made something new. We had these two clear liquid substances and now I have um, this kind of white powder collecting at the bottom of the beaker and this milky white uh, liquid on top. So that's really interesting. Our next test is going to be with baking soda and vinegar. And this is where if you have uh, these things at your house, you might want to pause the video and just do it yourself. But if not, you can follow along with me. So here I have some baking soda. I just used regular Arm & Hammer uh, baking soda that I got at the store. And I used a tablespoon of this baking soda. Here we can make some observations. Um, it's a very fine white powder. It doesn't really appear to leave much residue on the container. Um, so that's really interesting. We also have here uh, vinegar. And so if I hold it up close, you might see that it is kind of clear. You can somewhat see through it. Um, if I do my waft test, I notice it has a very bitter smell. Um, it's a very strong, bitter smell that I can, uh, can smell when I do that waft test. So we are going to go ahead and mix these together. And again, this is just about a third cup of vinegar in here. Um, and I am going to get my beaker and go ahead and again, mix these things together. So let's go ahead and do this. What? Wow, okay. So here you might see some things going on. Interesting. So hopefully you jotted down some notes that you saw what was happening during. Um, we now are seeing it calm down a little bit. And I am noticing that the liquid that's left behind is much more cloudy um, than the vinegar was. I also saw a lot of bubbles, which tells me that there's a gas being made um, and a gas is coming out. So that is a new thing. We didn't start with a gas um, here. And so 
I also noticed that the smell has become a little bit less sour. It doesn't smell quite the same way that it did before. So those are all some interesting observations that you might wanna have in your data table. All right, and here we have our final test. Um, so in this cup, I have my baking soda solution. So again, I just dissolve some of that baking soda in water, about a teaspoon uh, to about a third of a cup. And we can see it's completely clear. Uh, to me, this looks just exactly like water. I can't see anything floating in it. Here is my salt water. Again, completely clear, can't see anything floating in it. Um, these two look very similar. So we're seeing some shared properties between the baking soda and the salt, so, um, salt solution. So we are going to go ahead and mix these together and see what happens. All right, so here is my mixture looks pretty similar uh, we just still have that clear liquid i don't see anything floating in here it's just uh, a clear liquid like what we started with so make sure you have all of your results in your data table um, you've got some notes about what the substances looked like before and then after they were combined um, and then we will go ahead and think about what this means.